Is an EMP coming? Hey everybody, this is Michael with Asymmetrical Preparedness. We're going to talk about that, likelihood, reasons why, the truth about EMPs, and some stuff that you can do about an EMP. How to live your life, how to function, how to get done what you need to get done even after an EMP. And we'll talk about my number one way to tell if there has been an EMP. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Thank you very much for being here. Um, please subscribe. If you like the videos, you feel that I've earned your subscribe or ship. <laughs> also, the thumbs up, comments, sharing the videos, all that kind of stuff helps me and all the other prepping channels out there. Because you know, they don't like us, so you know, they do their thing to make it so we're not as seen as some other things. We all know about that. Um, so EMPs. Likely, let's talk about likelihood first. An EMP, I believe, I feel, my personal opinion, an EMP is much more likely than a nuclear, an actual nuclear attack, like where the missiles land, warheads on foreheads type stuff. Why do I say that? Because it's not, it's kind of like a step down, even though it can actually be more devastating to a society today, especially a first world nation with all the modern technology. And I'm going to talk about some myths about EMPs also, so stay tuned. Don't miss that part. Uh, that's probably going to be closer to the end because I'd like to talk more about the reality of and, you know, stuff like that first. What is an EMP? An EMP is electromagnetic pulse. It's a magnetic pulse caused by electrons in the atmosphere. So there's two main causes of an EMP. Actually, the only two that I know of. I'm not a complete expert on this though. I do know a lot about nuclear stuff because I used to work when I was in the military um, around nuclear weapons, security for them, vulnerability assessments for their security systems that protect the uh, assets. So I do know a lot about that, but I was not a missile tech, which people in the military and the Navy specifically will understand what a missile tech is. They are the guys that actually work on the warheads and stuff like that. But anyway, an EMP, the two main causes, a uh, solar flare, that's called a coronal mass ejection, that can cause an EMP. 18... 59, I think it was, was the last one that if an event happened, that, that was a Carrington event, if an event of that magnitude happened today with all our technology, whoo-wee, <laughs> it would be totally different than it happening in the 1800s, as you can tell. All right, the next one is a high altitude nuclear burst, meaning First, actually, before I get into that, let me talk us about some things. Um, some people, I hear different channels, stuff like that, once in a while I watch, and they misuse terms. A ballistic missile is not necessarily a nuclear missile. You can have non-nuclear ballistic missiles. I don't know why you would, but what is a ballistic missile? A ballistic missile is a long-range missile that... Um, is different from regular missiles. What do regular missiles do? They take off ground, air, sea, however, and then they travel within the atmosphere to a designated target and engage that target. A ballistic missile is designed to, using its, its first stage rocket motors, to get it out of the atmosphere, into outer space. And then it coasts along a trajectory until it gets to a point where it knows that's where it needs to re-enter. That's when the second stage rocket motors light off and gets it back into the atmosphere. So it actually goes into space, comes back down, and then the multiple warheads that are on these missiles deploy 
and hit multiple targets. Now, these nuclear missiles nowadays carry, I can't tell you, because that's classified, how many warheads are on each missile. But what I can tell you is there's a lot, there's plenty, that one missile can hit quite a few different targets. So let's get that out of the way. So, but if you detonate one of these in the upper atmosphere, that will cause an EMP. What can we, okay, let's get into the first thing I wanted to talk about was, what is my primary way to tell if we've been EMP'd? What I'm talking to right now, my cell phone. Because you can tell difference between power being out, if power goes out for some other reason, my cell phone will still work, right? It may not be charged as much because I keep it on the charger overnight. But, and the internet might also not work because the power's out. And your data may also not work depending on if the power outage affected cell towers. So how do you tell? Well, your phone won't turn on. It's dead. That's one way to tell if there's an EMP. And then, not just necessarily your phone. Maybe your phone died, maybe it just gave up the ghost and it was time for your cell phone to die. So check your laptop. Check anything else, the higher the tech, the more susceptible it is to an EMP. And we're gonna talk about some misnomers and some misinformation about EMPs in just a sec. An EMP basically fries electronic equipment. Not electrical, but a lot of our electrical grid and things that we use to produce electricity, to transfer electricity around our nation is electronic. So that's how it might affect the grid. All right, so that's something to think about there. <clears throat> EMPs, I feel in today's world, are a better option than nuclear, because why? Well, you don't have as much fallout. You don't have the stigma of nuclear war. But it's one of those things that is just as dangerous to national security because of infrastructure. Disable a nation's infrastructure and you're gonna cripple it. Just actually, I'm getting to that falsehoods about EMPs in just a minute, hang on. Disabling the infrastructure. Now, okay, people are like, okay, yeah, all the electronics in the Navy ships, all the electronics in the planes, the tanks, armored personnel carriers, all that stuff is would be wiped out. Well, not necessarily true. The military does take some measures to uh, EMP-proof some of their things. Now, it would still affect the military, though, because they haven't done it to the level that I feel they should be doing it, especially in today's world, but that costs a lot of money. And people are adverse to, you know, spending lots of money on na military and national defense, as, you know, maybe they should be, because if we weren't out being the world's policemen, if we were not sticking our noses everywhere that doesn't belong, and causing and creating a bunch of these enemies along the way, if we actually just took care of ourselves more and our own problems, we get enough problems in this country now that if we spent money and people and resources to fix the issues we have, we'd be much better off anyway, my personal opinion. Just like I used to recommend the military as a perfect thing for any, almost any young person. Go in the military, check it out, get some discipline, get some training, um, you know, earn a fairly okay wage, you know, E1, E2, E3, those are, you know, it's not that great a wage, but you're not paying for housing, you're not paying for food, you get your food provided for, your housing provided for you, and that money is just cash in your pocket. Not a bad way, right? Uh, not so much anywhere. I, I don't recommend the military because of what's happened and the things that they're forcing them to do, violating their free will, and all the other stuff, and the, the you know, the stuff I don't really talk about here, the, the politics type stuff, you know, um, I used to talk about that here. I talk about that over on Patreon, though, if you want to check it out there. It's a dollar a month. Well worth it. Link's in the description below. 
join us there, please. It's, it's, it's well worth it. It's a good community. Um, okay, so let's get into some misnomers. Okay, an EMP blast will not affect the whole country. Now, some people say that. Some people act like it'll just it'll fry everything in the United States. No, not true. Because it happens, you know, it happens like at this point in time. All right, and then it basically goes down at a certain, and it covers a certain amount of area. Obviously, the area directly underneath it and the surrounding area, you know, the, the smaller surrounding area right directly underneath it will be more affected. And then the effects will also go out, you know, a ways, depending on the altitude of the burst, depending on a lot of things. But another falsehood about EMPs some people talk about is they act like all electronics. Everything electrical or everything electronic will be fried. Not true. Atmospheric conditions affect it. Distance from the actual, you know, straight down from the burst affects it. It may still be in that affected area where some things are affected, but not everything. To properly EMP the entire United States, you would need, I don't even know exactly, so send me one, You'd probably need like 30, maybe. I don't know exactly. Don't quote me on that. But, you know, you need quite a few. And that's possible. There are countries out there, several countries. You guys know what they are, dragon, bear, stuff like that, that have that capability. But topography also affects it. So say if you're directly underneath it, it really won't matter, right? It'll pretty much eliminate all electronics right there. But say you're over here and say there's mountain range right here and you're down there. And so the mountain range blocks it. Heavy vegetation blocks it. There are a lot of things um, that affect it. Also weather, you know, clouds, rain, precipitation, that also may affect it in some ways. I'm not saying it won't go through, and I'm not saying it won't affect some things. But some people think like all newer vehicles will be fried. No, not necessarily true, because if you're outside that area, it won't be affected. If you are, you know, like these other factors, maybe your garage that you park your newer vehicle in um, was built in such a way that it provides, if it's still reinforced concrete maybe or something like that, or there's, you know, that kind of stuff involved, you, you may actually be protected. It may protect your vehicle from an EMP. So don't necessarily count out your newer vehicle. Don't sell it just to get a 1975, you know, um, K5 Blazer um, because that's EMP proof. Now, I would recommend getting a vehicle like that, you know, not that exact vehicle maybe, but anyway, it is, doesn't affect everything. It um, does not affect the United, entire United States. Um, so what are things, some things you can do about it? You've heard of Faraday cages, right? I don't need to go into that. There's a lot of videos out there that describe Faraday cages. You can make Faraday cages out of a lot of different things. So things like your comms, things like maybe um, a burner phone, things like um, any kind of vital electronics, um, I would say put them in a Faraday cage. Now, would I put a GPS in there? Uh, probably not, because if there's an EMP type stuff, there's probably gonna be other stuff going on and they're gonna shut down um, the GPS stuff anyway for civilian use. Um, there's a lot to, a lot to think about, a lot, lot to talk about. Please just think about what you have. Maybe make a Faraday cage or two, metal trash can, ammo cans, lots of different ways to do it. Make sure you have some of your stuff in there, like a backup phone. Um, you know, your, your ham radios, GMRS radios, FRS radios, your CBs, anything like that. Keep in a Faraday cage, as well as maybe um, microchips, meaning like SD cards and stuff like that, or um, um, like your like one ter hard drives, like one terabyte hard drives, 10 terabyte hard drives. I don't even know what they're up to nowadays, but, um, you know, with your, with your um, personal information on it with your um, digitized records, all your, you know, all the special, all the important documents you need, as well as family photos, um, anything that's important to you, electronically back them up on something like that, keep it in a Faraday cage. Maybe even have some kind of fireproof box to keep all your paper stuff in and bury it somewhere, maybe. Copies, not the originals. <laughs> um, keep your stuff safe, be smart, and remember that prepping is living insurance, and that, yes, we need to prep. We also need to be real about it. We don't need to be, um, you know, throwing out false information out there. So that's the real deal. Are we going to get an EMP? I would think that's probably likely. I would think it's a lot more likely than nuclear war. So prepare. Do what you need to do. Have a wonderful day. Love you guys. And blessings to you and yours.